When we think of health in Belize, what usually comes to mind is a vision of white-coated doctors and nurses, concrete block hospitals and health centers in our cities, towns, and villages. But in this village of San Antonio in the Cara district, resides a rather special man of medicine with his different sort of clinic. Don Elijo Panti is a bush doctor, and just down this road is his hospital. Born in 1899, Don Elijo has been practicing his craft for over 55 years. He learned medicine as a teclero. We are working deep in the forest. It was not easy to run to town every time a man got sick. Here in his unmarked roadside clinic, Don Elijo spends much of his time preparing traditional remedies. This medicine is for El Ciro, to cure El Ciro. Ciro is something that jumps in your belly button. It feels like little animals, but it's not animals, only wind. This wind can harm the heart, the stomach, the whole body. It's a very bad disease. Many people have it. They come here from all over, Mexico, Guatemala, Poptun, Belize City, Honduras, all types of people. The plant I'm chopping is a vine, and we also use the root. For this medicine, I'm chopping the root because it's stronger. It's good for zero, as well as several other ailments. The way you use it is to boil it in water and drink the warm liquid three times a day. You know when someone has El Ciro because it jumps. When you touch the belly button, it jumps. If it doesn't jump, then it's only natural wind. Some other symptoms are loss of appetite and sleeplessness. People don't know what it is, but I know and I cure it. Soon after their treatment, they are able to eat, drink, and sleep well. Many people suffer from this disease, many, and they die of it because the doctors didn't know. They're under the doctor's care, but they don't know the cure. They give the patient only pills and drugs, but they are not helped. Doctors tire themselves looking for a cure. In Merida, Guatemala, and elsewhere. And they end up here with me. Don Elijo's patients come to San Antonio from all parts of Belize, as well as Mexico and Central America. This baby has been brought in by his mother suffering from pesar, or grief, occasioned by his being weaned from the breast. In this case, a physical remedy is not called for. Instead, a series of nine prayers will be recited each day for nine days. Later that morning, a family has come all the way from the Piten in Guatemala. They receive a brief checkup in which taking the pulse is an important part. The father, suffering from internal pains, is examined more closely.
He is prescribed a mixture of divine chikoloro and sha'ak. They will be boiled and the liquid drank according to Dr. Panty's instructions. For most of us, all these tall trees, bushes, and other plants are known collectively as the jungle. But to Dr. Panty, this thick carpet of green is nature's drugstore, a veritable pharmacy containing more than 180 medicinal plants. If you are ailing from arthritis, blood pressure, or bad back, the chances are that there's a cure for it not far from where I'm standing. The leaves collected in the bush are called herbs. They are secondary medicines which are usually used in baths to relax a patient and help the healing process. Bark, roots and vines are referred to as primary medicines which are crushed or boiled and taken internally for serious ailments. Modern science is giving increasing attention to the medicinal properties of tropical plants. The World Health Organization, for example, is examining a vine which has been used for many years as a natural drug for birth control. Tulane University in New Orleans is using a computer to catalog hundreds of traditional remedies from all over the world. And the National Cancer Institute of the United States is gathering plant samples from every tropical region to test their effectiveness in the treatment of this most deadly of diseases. Rosita Arvigo is a nature cure physician and herbalist trained in the United States. She has been studying under Dr. Panty for several years and helps him at his clinic three days each week. It is just like medical school, she says, only with one teacher and one student. They come from all over Belize, all the districts. They come from uh, Guatemala, Natur, um, Mexico City, uh, Merida, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador. Because people who do what Don Eligio does get to be very famous. And when they're in need and they can't get help in other areas, well, they find out from neighbors and friends and relatives. And very often, uh, patients come directly from hospitals. Uh, it's a broad range of ailments, just as much as you would find in any physician's office. He's basically a family practitioner. He treats a lot of uh, children, a lot of infants, and um, uh, takes care of uh, women during pregnancy as well. Uh, a lot of it is related to uh, stomach disorders, a lot of uh, gastritis, gastric problems, uh, inflammation of the stomach, uh, constipation, or problems with digestion, headaches, a lot of uh, skin disorders like uh, fungus, um, diabetes is a very common one. He has a wonderful remedy for diabetes, which is the uh, bark of a tree called lilywet. But there's more than just the physical medicinal plants here. There's a whole system of medicine that was about to be lost to the world. And that I could also see, that he hadn't trained another individual who can read and write. A great scientist by the name of Professor Plotkin once said that every time a medicine man dies before his knowledge is captured, it's as though a library has burned down. And that's how I feel about Don Eligio, that for the benefit of mankind, someone had to record it and capture it before the world fell. So Don Eligio right now is going blind from cataracts. He could no longer travel through the bush alone, so he relies on me to be his eyes, so to speak. And we try to uh, collect as much medicine as possible during those days that I'm here with him so that he has a week supply. And I would say he uses about 100 to 200 pounds of medicine a week. And that all has to be collected from the wilds and all has to be chopped and dried and one by one distributed to the patients. Well, since we're looking at a, a cultural system of medicine, it's a system of Maya medicine, and that was an ancient culture. And it's important for modern people to understand, and sometimes difficult, that the uh, old Mayans looked at life very differently than we do. They didn't separate the physical and the spiritual or the supernatural world. To them, it was all one continuum. And life was a wheel, and the wheel contained the physical world and the spiritual world. So Don Eligio is actually a himen, which means doctor priest. And the doctor priest cared for the physical ails of the people and the spiritual ails of the people. So about half of his practice actually involves uh, magic and ritual. And if we look at the uh, system of the Mayan culture, we see that they had a hierarchy of medical practitioners. The doctor priest was at the top. Below that was the curandero. And below that might have been the, uh, the 
the household healer, who was usually the mother or the grandmother, who had a very good basic knowledge of medicinal plants. And then there was the bone setter and the midwife. So there were a series of health practitioners. And at the top was the doctor priest. And that's the position that Don Eligio occupies today. Although now the world is changing so rapidly, it's almost as though he's a priest without a church. There was a time when the practice of traditional medicine was laughed at as a relic of a time long ago when superstition and not science prevailed. Lately, however, we have come full circle and there's a growing appreciation for natural medicine and the power of ancient remedies. Which makes it ironic, for as more and more people turn to folk medicine as a means towards a healthier life, there are fewer and fewer traditional healers to help them. Don Elijo Panti is 88 years old, and when he dies, it is likely that most of his knowledge will accompany him. Our healthcare system or hospitals now is now is overwhelmed. It's not getting overwhelmed. We've, we've passed the saturation point, we've passed the limit, we are strained, um, and that refers to both public and private. And public means the, the regional hospitals and of course the flagship being called Houston.